This is a fake iPhone 10, and it's about as good as you would expect. So on this channel, I've looked at a lot of fake phones in the past, and for the most part, they've proven to be generally okay. However, the iPhone 10 poses a new challenge for fake makers, and that is the screen, and specifically the shape. So most phones in the past, and this is changing, have had rectangular screens. Now those are very easy for fake makers to fake because all you have to do is put a rectangle in a phone and that's very cheap and very easy. However, the iPhone 10 has a really different shape that's a lot more difficult to replicate. So first of all, on the bottom of the phone, the screen has rounded edges. That's kind of difficult to do. And also on the top, there's the whole matter of the notch. It's very, very difficult for fake makers to make a screen that is not only rounded, but has a cutout in it. So you may be wondering, how did the fake makers do it on this fake? They didn't. They, ju they just didn't. So bear with me because this is kind of hard to explain. If you look very closely on the screen next to the notch, you'll see that there's a couple different areas of the screen. There's, there's the notch, which you can see is the darkest color. Then directly on either side of it, there's a sort of dark gray, and right below that is another more obvious bezel. So those gray areas right next to the notch, they don't actually do anything, they're just blank spaces. The large bezel that you can see in a line directly below the notch, that is the actual edge of the screen. Now the same trend continues on the bottom where you can see this big blank bezel right on the bottom of the screen where they didn't bother to make it rounded. Now when the screen is off and you're not really looking too closely and you're kind of like really far away, it can kind of look like it's the actual iPhone 10 front. But as soon as you turn the screen on, any idea of this being real kind of goes out the window. For starters, you can see that while the screen does not actually fit the device's contours, the fake makers have rounded it and cut out a notch to make it seem like it does. So when you actually look at the top area of the screen, it's a complete mess. The notch cutout is incorrectly sized. It's also below the actual notch. It's taking away from the actual screen real estate. And if you look on the corners of the screen where they've made them round, you'll notice that they just did that with software and it's not actually a rounded screen. So yeah, it's not really very convincing and pretty sure anyone that turns this phone on would be immediately able to tell that it's a fake. But onto the rest of the phone, it's it's not terrible, I guess. The, uh, the entire build is plastic, make no mistake. Even the sides are plastic. Uh, I have seen some fakes that use actual metal for the sides of the phone. Like a lot of the fake galaxies, the Note 8 and the S7 used real metal for the chassis of the phone. This is not the case here. Uh, it's pretty clear that it's plastic if you actually hold it, but it looks decent from a far distance. The camera cutout also looks decent. It's plastic and the top camera module is fake. If you look at a close-up of the camera, you can see that the lenses don't look the same. Uh, only the bottom one is actually a camera. The thing that I really do not like about a lot of these fake phones, and this one is no exception, is the way the power button feels. Because for whatever reason, it's really stiff and you can't even feel when it's pressed. So when you click the phone, you don't even feel a button press. It just happens. Really annoying. But overall, the phone has a pretty decent weight to it. It it doesn't feel that flimsy. Even though when I unbox this, if you've seen that video, then you know that as soon as I took it out, the, the back of the phone started to peel off, which wasn't great. Oh. Oh, dear. Back is not... Uh. But I was able to, you know, kind of push on it and now it's back so I guess that's good. Don't expect too much out of the build quality of a fake that costs $80. In fact, uh, yeah, I can still hear the 
there's stuff rattling around in it. That's not that's not fantastic. But onto the software because I, I really don't like when fake makers do this, but they try to replicate the features of the actual phone, and it just it would be better off if they just didn't. Honestly, let's start with the lock screen because it's just horrible. I mean, it looks accurate, I guess, but it's really glitchy. And in order to unlock it, you have to swipe up from the bottom, but it's very, very touchy. And it only works about 40% of the time. You have to try multiple times to get it to unlock. Um, it does vibrate when you've done the gesture, but that is not an indication that all is well and it's going to unlock the phone because <laughs> it does not. Now, one of the things that I do give them props for attempting to replicate is Face ID because I know it's got to be kind of difficult. Um, actually, you know what? No, I don't give them props because it's terrible. They didn't even try. Um, you register your face. And basically it's it's just, it, it looks for a circle in the camera and anything that's vaguely circular will unlock this. Once we're in the device, eh, they did a decent job of replicating the UI. You can see they've done a good job with the dock being rounded, which is different from a lot of their other user interfaces. So yeah, the fake iPhone 10 is a little bit confusing because on the back side, it actually looks pretty good. I sent Snapchats to my friends going, oh wow, look, I got the new iPhone, and none of them were able to call my bluff on that. Um, it, it does bear a passing resemblance to the real deal from the back, but once you get to the screen and the user interface, it's just a mess. And honestly, that's pretty much the case for all of these fake phones. Um, once you actually get past the lock screen, or get past just the exterior of the phone, they completely fall apart, and you can tell in a matter of milliseconds that they're not what they claim to be. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. Um, if for whatever reason you want to buy this phone, I have linked the DHgate listing in the description below. But I would strongly advise you not to buy this unless you want to throw away 80 bucks and, you know, have a prank phone, which I guess has some merit. And with all that said, make sure you subscribe and tune in for the next... I don't know when I'm going to post it. I was going to say next week, but with my upload schedule, who even knows? But do make sure you're subscribed and hit that bell so that you know when I've posted a video and you can be the first one there.